wonderful good afternoon, everybody. I hope you have had a very good break. I've seen much more uh, person outside uh, trying to, to, to catch some coffee and cakes, but maybe we'll get more audience for our panel. I'm very glad uh, and uh, honored by uh, the uh, high-level uh, panel that we are able to present today. Uh, let me start by the uh, Arabic protocol, welcoming the guests, our guest from Sudan, who is uh, the Minister Abdul Rahim Mahmoud Hamdi, former Minister of Sudan for Finance and, um, and Economy. He was born in Khartoum, 1939, and had studied at the University of Khartoum Economics and Social Studies till 1962, and has um, studies in Birmingham at uh, the year 1964 and also 1974. He was not only twice Minister of Finance in Sudan, but also Deputy Manager and Manager of various banks. And his specialities, and I've had a very uh, long discussion with His Excellency during the last two days, is uh, finance banking and also Islamic banking, which, which is now very common and uh, uh, very uh, coming in, in, uh, in the mouth of some bankers in, in Europe and uh, in the Western country. Um, let me step by uh, welcoming also His Excellency Ambassador Mahmoud Hassan Al-Amin, who is Ambassador of Sudan to the Republic of Austria, to Slo uh, Slovak Republic, to the Czech Republic, to the Republic of Slovenia and Republic of Hungary. And also he is the uh, resident permanent representative of the Republic of Sudan to the international organization in Vienna. He was born 1953. He's married with four children. He studied political strategic study at uh, the University of Zaim. Al Azhari, I hope I pronounce it well, and also studied in uh, France. And he has a Bachelor of Science at the University of Khartoum from 1976. Before he became ambassador 2009 in Austria, he was director of cabinet of the Minister of Foreign Affairs between 2007 and 2000. Uh, and nine, and uh, the time before he was ambassador of the Sudan to Senegal and non resident ambassador of Sudan to Mali, Burkina Faso, Gambia, and Sierra Leone. He has uh, an in tremendous uh, position. Uh, he was heading um, a lot of uh, sections for Africa Department in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Sudan. Uh, very warm welcome to Your Excellency, and also I would like to welcome Diplomat General Paul Slatin, who is the President of the Austrian Sudanese Friendship Association. He was born in Vienna, 1944, studied at the Technical University of Vienna, is the university I graduate in also, and he has a lot of uh, career positions, and especially he would like, or we would like to hear from him about his ex experience in the recent uh, visit to Sudan. Uh, but let us start with His Excellency Ambassador Al-Amin, who would like to give us a short overview about Sudan, focusing also on 
uh, some topics, especially the referendum on January 2011, which is, I think, will be a core referendum in the history of the Republic of Sudan. Your Excellency, the floor is yours. Thank you very much and uh, good afternoon. I'm very glad to be here today uh, with uh, such distinguished panelists and distinguished guests. Uh, Sudan, two and a half million square kilometers, the largest country in Africa, the tenth largest country in the world, strategic location, neighbor to nine countries. From the Red Sea, Sudan can easily reach Asian, Middle Eastern, and European markets and economies. Abundance of mineral resources, petroleum, natural gas, gold, silver, copper, iron, uranium, just to name a few. Animal wealth that's estimated as almost 140 million heads. Sudanese economy is among the fastest growing economies in the world. It's not us who say this. The World Bank reports speak about that. And among others, the New York Times, the Washington Post, the New York, the, the Los Angeles Times, Boston Globe, a media that can hardly be regarded as biased to Sudan or even friendly with it, they have all testified to that. The Sudanese economy is booming. As you are well aware that 73 days from today, the Sudan is going to have its most important event in history. The people from South Sudan are going to vote to choose between unity and separation, to choose between staying in the same country or have their own independent state. The referendum, which will take place on the 9th of January 2011, is the culmination of a process that started six years ago. And the last chapter in the Comprehensive Peace Agreement, well known as the CPA. That's an agreement which was signed between the North and the South ending more than 20 years of civil war. The signing of the CPA, the Comprehensive Peace Agreement, was a unique event and a historical achievement. While addressing the root causes of the conflict, it has also acknowledged and addressed the fact that Sudan is a multi-ethnic, multi-religious and multicultural society. It has laid the ground for a political system which is committed to the international instruments of diversity, of rule of law, of human rights, of democratic rule and good governance. The power sharing formula has permitted many of the political forces in Sudan to participate in a government of national unity. And the financial resources of the country are fairly divided in a manner that reflect the different, different levels of development in the country. When the two sides, the South and the North, signed the agreement in 2005, an agreement that gave the South the right to self-determination both of them agreed and undertook to make their best and to exert every effort to make the unity 
attractive. And that has been the priority of the, of the government since its inception five or six years, almost six years ago. Much has been spoken and much has been said about the <coughs> referendum in the media and in the newspapers in the last few weeks. And I would like to confirm here and to affirm that the referendum is going to take place on time. In spite of the fact that there are still many questions to be resolved. The border question, the sharing of the revenue, the citizenship, the debt question. But anyway, people are working hard to solve these issues which are really important and essential for a healthier and peaceful relationship between the North and the South if, and hopefully not, the South decided to have independence. Uh, I don't want to talk much. I would like, for, of course, to leave the floor to uh, our distinguished guests here. Uh, but before ending, I would like to point that and to affirm that we are going to have a peaceful referendum. We are going to have a peaceful post-referendum era. The media coverage of Sudan lately has been characterized by much of sensation and by much of injustice and non-fairness. Bad news always make good piece of news. Good news or not. So they don't talk much about the good news that's happening in Sudan. Yes, we admit that we're having problems. We recognize that we're having problems, but we are working very, very hard to uh, solve these problems. And we are hoping that the talks that are going on today, if you're following, in Qatar, in Doha, concerning the question of Darfur, will come to an end by the end of this year, and will reach an agreement which will give lasting peace to Darfur. Before I conclude, I just would like to express our deep thanks and appreciation to see uh, His Excellency Abdurrahim Hamdi, who came all the way from Sudan to be with us here today and also to express our thanks and appreciation for the uh, Austro-Arab Chamber of Commerce and for my good friend Mudar al Khoja, uh, who has made a lot to make this event happen. And uh, of course, at the very end, a special word of thanks also goes to you for taking the time to be with us here today. Thank you very much. Just a smooth hand over to Diplomat General Slatin, who will give us some impression about his association and also his interaction with Sudan. Good afternoon. I'm talking on behalf of the Austrian Sudanese Friendship Society. In Austria, we have the institution of many such societies, but they get their power. Uh, always then if uh, politics don't work that good and so in this respect we keep the people-to-people -people relations even then if some of uh, the mainstream politics are not according to the feelings which we have. Anyhow, the uh, Austrian Sudanese society, friendship society, was established 10 years ago we are not very many members, and I have uh, placed outside at the table some leaflets, which, uh, which are the newest uh, newsletter, and also some leaflets, and if uh, somebody of you is interested to get the information, please.